Right, I haven't done one of these for a while. Um, uh, reaction video, it's uh, 27 minutes. See how far we get. So here we go. Labour should be the most natural thing that a woman can do with her body. So if my body's able to make a baby, it's certainly able to give birth to the baby. And I'm... <laughs> I want to be as relaxed as possible, but I don't know what I'm going to be like. I'm not naive. It is my first baby, so I'm not saying that I'm going to be perfect and I'm going to be calm. I'm carrying her, aren't I? I get to bond with her every day. I feel her move. I talk to her and stuff, but he's... I've been talking to her. Yeah, I mean, since I since I started so. showing, he Hello. talks to her, he Hello. reads books to her, he won't sing to her because he can't... Not regular. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I, th I think it's pretty much accepted now that when the baby's in the womb, the baby can hear what's going on outside. Obviously, baby doesn't uh, understand language yet, but the sounds can be heard by the baby. And, you know, on a, on a negative side, you know, babies that in the womb are exposed to uh, shouting and sounds that accompany aggression and stuff like that, that can have an impact on the baby's forming amygdala in uh, in the womb and uh, later on, you know, it can grow bigger than it ordinarily would, uh, which can lead to all kinds of uh, issues in the future. So I really do like this bit about talking and playing music and all of that stuff. It's it's fab. Singer. He can't yeah. sing or dance, so he doesn't do those two things. But she responds to his voice now, and I think he really likes that. Unplug the phone. Close the curtains, light the candles, play the CD, use oil for massage, and give me something to smell. Anything else you need me to do? You'd yeah. never remember that if I didn't write it down. Offer me small snacks and drinks, don't ask me. All right, okay. Don't talk about anything else, unless I encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sound really bossy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not bossy, am I? No. I'm doing hypnobirthing, where I want a natural birth as possible. Right. My mum hold on, and hold, Paul gonna... hold on. So, I, I, I love that kind of list of preferences, you know, and I love the fact that they've taken the time to write it out. And he's joking, I think, but you, you know, it is important that um, the birth partner, him in this instance, is aware of of what his partner wants. And uh, you know, I'm a bit worried. Uh, as this moves on, I hope uh, what one born every minute are doing is not t showing us a woman that has birth preferences or a birth plan, wants to give birth naturally, is using um, hypnobirthing. I really hope that one born every minute isn't going to show us that and then show us it all going differently. I hope not, but let's keep watching to be my birth companions. Relax. My mum's role is to be the main person as to the hypnotherapy. Good girl. How loud do you want it? Mm. A, little bit louder. A little bit louder, Paul, please. However, I don't want Paul to feel like he's in the background. Is that loud enough? Yeah. He won't be comfortable saying certain things like, you know, go with my mum's going to talk in her hypnotherapist voice and he will feel quite silly. And if, if it's something that you're not comfortable doing, he's not really going to be much help to me. We do go through some of our classes a little bit about relaxation and we go through hypnobirthy and you can see in the group of people. I... <laughs> First impressions of uh, the, the woman in grey. I, I don't know about you and where you work, but uh, when I was clinically involved in the NHS, the grey uniforms were core staff. And um, as I watched this, and I don't know, maybe she's having a bad day, maybe she's tired. Um, but uh, 
I'm not sure how keen she is to be there, are you? Anyway, here we go. The ones that are completely out for the count listening to the whole CD and the other ones that look at you as if to say, what is this? Yes. Mum's going to be talking to me and telling me to relax and telling me what to visualise. Is that hard enough? Sam is into this hypnobirthing, which I hadn't heard anything about at all, so she's told me all about it. Um, there's various ways, but to me as a mum, I've picked out what I think she wants. Use your dial, darling. Use your dial. Three. Turn it down. Two. And one. Relax. I think some birthing partners, whether it, it's her husband or her boyfriend, sometimes it's her mother or her sister, and they are really keen to be involved and talking them through the contractions. And, you know, if, if they are doing that and that seems to be going well and there's a good relationship between them, they just feel that they've achieved it together. I take it back. <coughs> uh, the midwife in, in grey, uh, she's bang on, you know. That whole sense of him... Uh, or the birth partner uh, being involved in a way that's kind of useful. I, I like what she said a lot. I do want a natural birth, so I'm going to just use paracetamol. If I need gas and air, then I'll use it, but the plan is to not have anything at all, really. Good girl. Turn your dial. Labour should be the most natural thing that a woman can do with her body. So if my body's able to make a baby, it's certainly able to give birth to the baby. And I just think, just let nature do its job. You're stretching yeah. your muscles, that's all it is, darling. You're pretty good at this, you know? <laughs> you don't need any no, drugs, no, just remind me. Yeah, I will, don't worry. You don't want anything, that was your stipulation. Sorry, I'll get better at the mechanics of all this as I go along. I, I, I didn't want to move on from here until we'd spoken a little bit about hypnobirthing. You know, hypnobirthing has a long tradition and a long history. It kind of acknowledges that we have conscious mind processes and un unconscious mind processes. And actually, the unconscious mind processes that are at work in our lives are pretty much running our lives. And our unconscious mind has enormous power to access resources, you know, strength or wisdom that we didn't even know we had. And all of the hypnobirthing tribes that are out there are seeking to access this. And I love the way that the mum is using a metaphor of turning the dial of the pain down. You know, that's right. You can turn that dial down. Now, it might sound a little bit weird. It might seem a bit fanciful, but it is powerful and it works. So, you know, I encourage anyone, any woman I meet who's uh, at a booking or whatever, I encourage them to pursue hypnobirthing. You don't have to buy a course. You can get a book, a CD. Um, yeah, I... Just recommend it, really do. <laughs> that works, that does. Yeah, it does. You just have to stop panicking, sweetheart. Mum, I can't help it. One other thing, that there, there, there is evidence that hypnobirthing is effective. Uh, there was a trial done by Sue Down. I think it was called the, was it the sleep trial? Um, that trial in particular didn't find any significant difference when it came to outcomes. But it did point to differences in terms of reduced fear, sense of fear, and I think reduced use of analgesics. Now, the problem with that trial was, in the first instance, they had trouble recruiting and they had to take the word hypnosis or hypnobirthing out of the recruitment literature because there seemed to be resistance to the idea of hypnosis but the second thing is if you read the the protocol for uh, the group that was receiving hypnobirth training you quickly realize that it was nothing like 
what most hypnobirthing training offers women. It was very condensed and potted and you couldn't really compare it with what is out there for hypnobirthing training. But I'll put the link to that trial uh, in the description. It's so I strong. I know it is. But what it is, is, it's her, isn't it? It's just the baby. It's just your tummy stretching. Okay. I can't wait to meet her. <laughs> no. Be she, all baby. she's doing, Trina, is your, is your tummy is stretching. So if you can just imagine, that's all that's happening. Your tummy is stretching. Okay? I don't necessarily think this track's very relaxing. <laughs> Not. Are you going to turn it in after? Just... Oh, okay. We're in a Chinese restaurant. I don't even have to do that. Is it next? Come here. So strong. That's brilliant. It's coming. It's so strong. That means she's getting closer. Eh? That means the tummy's stretching. It's so hot. Gee, 30, you always fail in, babe. Yeah, but seriously, can't I have a half a pepper or something? Just keep me going. No, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not. No, you listen to me. No, I want... You listen to me. I want half a just half. No, please, Mum. Listen to me. You're right, You asked me to be strong for you. Now, listen, you're just panicking, sweetheart. That's all. Just relax, babe. She's nearly here, babe. You're just panicking, darling. You've got all your dreams, you want to do this as natural as possible. If you had a curry last night. Uh, this is what that just showed on the screen there. Kind of, I feel uncomfortable when I watch it. And it's, it's probably uh, one of the hardest um, parts of my role as, as a midwife. And it's so important that, uh, you know... A, a loved one or a birth partner is advocating for this woman. It's so difficult when a woman has got to the point where she is feeling like she needs something for the pain uh, that she's experiencing. What she's doing isn't working for her. And in that moment, and the, the line between a woman giving consent to what's going on and the advocacy of the birth partner is just so fine. It's such a fine line. And uh, this mother here in this instance really holds holds firm in the context of what they had agreed beforehand. Uh, it's very difficult. And, uh, you know, this woman's a hero in my book. <laughs> So There's nothing that I wouldn't want the baby to, not to inherit from Paul because he's annoying things. So what I love about him and what makes me laugh. You feel anything? There isn't anything because he hasn't got a bad bone in his body. Something coming then. Yeah. All of a sudden, I just had this almighty urge to become a mum, and I wanted his children. It's weird. It's like it happened overnight. Yeah. You happy? How happy she's going to be? Mm -hmm. How happy do you think? Yeah. There is an age gap between us, but we don't see it as an, an age gap at all. You know, it's, what, 19 years yeah. age gap, isn't it? But, you know, we we don't even think about it. You'd think it was the other way around anyway. Yeah. Because well, I'm so mature. She's the more mature one, I'm the stupid one. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but everyone that meets me says, oh, you know, I can't believe you're in your 20s. And um, I remember when I was 21, someone said, you're 21, going on 40. And I am. Just your tummy. Yeah. It's nothing scary. Pressure on my bum. It's just your... Oh, sure, you maybe your baby's ready to come. Oh, you don't push want it to push push out first. Out. Push push out first. You Did you hear that? The midwife in the background. I'm getting pressure on my bum. Uh, that weren't the midwife. <laughs> that was the woman. The pressure on her bum is, you know, you, it could be evidence that the baby's head is coming down the birth canal and, you know, the rectum is being squeezed together, giving that sensation of a full rectum. 
and you know what's coming next is some kind of urge to push you know to expel the baby as the as the uterus is contracting and the space in there is getting smaller you know much like a plunger and the baby's rotating and the head is pressing on the rectum and a, a, a physiological process right that's going to lead inevitably to the baby being born you know i liked what she said early on in the video where she said it's a natural process and i will be able to give birth it's got to be true right i mean every woman comes from a long line of effectively birthing women uh, if that were not true uh, there would be no human race but did you hear what the midwife said in the background don't push just yet now, those words are words that you would never hear coming out of my mouth as a midwife. Never. You know, the idea that, that a woman who is experiencing it, an irresistible urge to push could not push, uh, for me, is ridiculous. And we heard the midwife. We got a sneak peek into her philosophy and values. Don't push yet. Words that I never utter. And I'd encourage you to erase them from your midwifery uh, vocabulary hey, yeah. and you just wait for Katie to look at you <laughs> yeah. such a mummy so thing she today. might be coming oh, hey. so don't push yeah. it yeah. be nearly here yeah right, little, push. Little, little push little push little push that's it there she comes and pants pant down pants all right and little push got a chin's out nearly little and push is a chin little out little push down chin's out okay and here we go more of it little push little push little push now this kind of vocabulary and this philosophy or this embedded value uh, system is suggesting that somehow this woman's perine perineum can be saved from any trauma by this kind of coaching now i'll let you into a secret i've been practice practicing about two years newly qualified and i gave up a few things i gave i gave up guarding the perineum i gave up tr putting pressure on the baby's head as it was coming out i gave up all of this little push little push little push because i came to believe through experience that none of it matters in terms of protecting uh, a woman's perineum from trauma and over the years, 15 years working in the NHS, largely in the labour ward or at home birth, when I gave all of that up, I saw no significant difference in uh, intact perineum rates. I don't like this language, but you'll hear it. You know, what is your intact perineum rate? As if you can separate a perineum from the whole person who's giving birth. But I did keep audit figures. And in those years when I was not touching the head, guarding the perineum, coaching, pushing, my hands were off. The woman was uh, more often than not the first person to touch the baby. I saw no significant differences. Now, I don't know if there is much evidence out there. I'll take a look. Uh, what the current evidence um, arena is like. Uh, but my guess is um, the evidence will bear out that kind of philosophy. But I could be wrong. She's <laughs> out. You don't frown. Well, you did it, darling. Look at you. So proud know. of you. So well. We started trying for a, for a baby about two and a half years ago, um, and then we had complications. Right, I'm going to stop there for this video. Um, I will be doing the rest of it. Uh, I think we've got some other types of experiences coming up. Uh, I've really enjoyed that video. You know, we've uh, spoken about hypnobirthing uh we've spoken about oh we haven't spoken about water birth i mean it's great that this is in the pool and i'm guessing these days that water birth is uh, more popular what it than it was when i started out in 91 we had a water birth pool and every month 
it got sabotaged. Back then, we used to use a mercury th thermometer to measure the temperature, and someone would break a mercury thermometer in the birth pool and put it out of action. And I'm convinced it was happening because there was insecurity uh, about uh, being with a woman when she was in water. Um, anyway, thank you very much for, for tuning in. Do like and describe. Uh, describe? Subscribe. And... Uh, I'll be back with part two and probably part three in the next couple of days. Uh, what was going to say? Oh, yeah, I do my best uh, not to edit these videos at all. Um, if you'd like to see more editing, if you'd like to see less commenting by me or more commenting, please let me know. And thank you for tuning in.